word porn is typed into internet search engines up to a quarter of a million times a day. There are over a billion websites worldwide with porn-related content. Over nine million British men admit to watching porn. We've asked a thousand of them why, and the results are eye-popping. A quarter of the upper classes prefer bondage, and two-thirds of men who went to boarding school prefer girl on girl. I think we watch it because we love it. You just put two lesbians on, you know, thump yourself dry, move on. Porn is sex, sex, sex. Why do working class men say they watch porn to de-stress? And why do the upper classes seek out riskier porn? Rich or upper class people prefer cheap porn because they just want to see Sharon from Croydon being shagged and lay by. I just think porn has a place in everyone's hearts and lives. To find out, we've devised a unique experiment. And these are the 20 men who have volunteered to take part. Not too nervous, um, a little bit excited and a little bit uh, curious. I've seen all kinds of porn and I've not liked it. I've got nothing to be nervous of right now. I'm a little bit apprehensive about it. The sort of porn I wouldn't like to watch is anything with anal or violent sex. If you want to show me something and shock me, I'll be, I'll be more than happy. We'll secretly film them and measure their responses. And then we'll show their partners. Yeah, no, he looked pretty bored. He did smile on the girl on girl one. Sometimes it can be a pain in the ass. <laughs> and if the men try and hide their feelings, our experts will find them out. If they know that their neighbour is watching or something, they probably will make a real effort to hide their body language. Each individual is going to come to the, the experience with a different set of messages, a different amount of baggage. But we're not just putting men to the test. We'll be asking Britain's women what they think of porn too. If you're going to sit upstairs and sit and think about it, why not just get on and do it? My favourite type of porn is probably bondage. In the next hour, we'll tell you the truth about porn oh. and why men watch it. These 20 men have been hand-picked to take part in a radical experiment. They'll be dragged kicking and screaming into this room, where they'll be subjected to hours and hours of exposure to pornography. Oral, girl-on-girl, -girl, spanking and hardcore. All in the name of science. Not only that, we wanted to see what their wives and girlfriends would think of their partner's reactions to watching porn. But before our poor, suffering guinea pigs endure this mental torture, let's hear more about them. The men are split into four age groups, 18 to 25, 26 to 35, 36 to 50, and the over 50s. Representing our 26 to 35 age group are Belton, Andrew, Marlon, Richard, and Charlie Bell. Charlie's 35, a steel fixer, describes himself as middle class and says he's a frequent user of porn. I probably watch porn every other day. I like big boobs, I like girl on girl, but then I'm getting desensitised to porn as well. Charlie's been married to Ineda for four years. We met in Venezuela when I was working out there as a financial consultant. For a laugh, one of her friends started a conversation between the two of us, and then we just met and I got her number and we just took it yeah. from there. I suppose the motivation for me watching porn currently would be uh, <laughs> It'd probably be to relieve some sort of tension, uh, very briefly. I mean, you know, I, I've been around the block and I don't really need any techniques, um, tips at this stage. Um, <laughs> if we're watching it together, obviously, I'll go for whichever type of porn Charlie would like to watch, because it's a sharing kind of thing. And the ones I liked, which I watch on my own, um, he wouldn't really want to watch them, because it probably has a lot of wheelies in it. <laughs> From the youngest age group, there's Jerome, Nathan, Julian, David and Sam Beadle. Sam's from London. He's 22, is a magician, considers himself to be middle class and doesn't use porn at the moment. My first experience with porn was between the ages of 12 and 13. I don't really watch it these days. I don't really, it's not really my thing. But, um, but I have had experience with porn. Sam's new girlfriend, Vega, also happens to be the assistant in his alternative stage act. We, we swallow razor blades, we fire eat, we fire breathe, we, uh, <laughs> we do all sorts of crazy things. Usually I've got you chained up against a brick wall. And <laughs> I suppose what I would normally have searched for would be your, just your typical straight 
porn, two people, and that, that would be it. Me and Sam are, are pretty, pretty straight with each other. If there's something that I don't want to do, I won't do it. Um, I think that, you know, porn is, is there as a, as a fantasy for men. It's there as a form of escapism. So if, if there's something that Sam likes that I don't, well, then there's, there's always porn. From the 35 to 50 year olds, there's Paul, Dave, Rod, Jim, and Jeremy Brown. Jeremy's friends call him Jem. He's 40, a wrestling coach, and considers himself working class. He's an occasional porn viewer. I've seen loads of different things, you know. If I surf the net and I'll see something, uh, an image, um, I may, you know, sort of like download it. Jem's been with his partner Shirley for 12 years. When you're in a relationship, you're always looking for something to spark another, you know, sort of like, if you like, a, um, another good night of sex. Pornography doesn't bother me. If he wants to watch it, he can watch it. I don't mind. I'm one of these characters that y you can, you know, embarrass, uh, but I won't show it. Finally, from the over 50s, there's Seamus, Peter, Charles, John, and Ken Audrey Wade. Ken is 63, retired and very middle class. Lived in Amsterdam for many years, but doesn't watch any porn anymore. It's like looking at fresh meat. Yeah, pornography is like, it's, it's a business, isn't it? Ken's been married to Hazel for 15 years, but their relationship got off to a fiery start. I said, if you think I want to get involved with anybody, anything like that, I said, you can forget it. We were married a few months later. I ended up in Amsterdam with Hazel, and I had the opportunity to go in and run this place called Gay Paradise. It was a club that was on the ground floor, and above was a male brothel. Living the high life in Amsterdam has given Ken and Hazel broad minds. It's no different than girls looking at muscly men in magazines. Sometimes wives get a bit upset if they don't know, and it should be something that perhaps they should talk about. These four men are about to watch a series of adult films they've never seen before. They have no idea how they'll react, and neither do their other halves. Later on, we'll show Shirley, Vega, Hazel and Aneda the reactions of their men. Just what is it that gets nine million men watching porn on the internet every year? Is watching porn still as taboo today as it used to be? Does watching porn only ever result in, um, one conclusion? Do men need help to get themselves in the mood? Are they looking for tips, tricks or techniques? Are they trying to escape their mundane lives? Or are they satisfying a secret desire? So, to find out as much as we could about who, what, why, how and where they watch, we asked you. We commissioned a nationwide poll of a thousand men between the ages of 18 and 65. And, before you ask, the husband of the former Home Secretary did not take part. We wanted to know as much as possible about you, your age, your income, where you live, what school you went to, whether you're working class or upper class. So, for starters, we wanted to know what you were watching and where you were watching it. Our poll revealed that 23% of British men watch porn at least once a week. But the figure shoots up to nearly 50% for those earning over £60,000 a year. And 20% of men in that wage bracket watch porn at the office. Well, that explains what all those bankers were doing during the credit crunch. Wealth affords you time on your hands. With time on your hands, literally, time on your hands. You toil away for all your life, and then the minute you start earning 60k, you can really get your feet on the desk, really start watching that internet porn. Let's be honest, rich people are twats. You know, we, we're working. That's the whole idea of working class. We're actually working. So let's put the men to work in our pornography experiment. No, I'm having an open mind for today. I'm going to take, take what's thrown at me. I'm just hoping it's not, you know, a few blokes in a room in front of a TV with their hands on their laps. <laughs> when I get home tonight, I'll probably be feeling a bit horny, I reckon. And being in the Navy, and I very much doubt he was going to shock me at all. Each of the men has a heart rate monitor attached to their chest and linked wirelessly to a wristwatch to precisely measure their pulse during the exercise. An elevated pulse is one possible sign of sexual arousal. Next door, we've built a viewing room for our volunteers, and helping to understand more about why men watch porn is Professor Brian McNair. Men are programmed genetically to have sex 
with as many partners as possible. Uh, you know, this is the genetic, if you like, determination of male sexuality. And insofar so far as men find sex attractive, then it's not really a surprise that they're going to find uh, the, the image of sex attractive. The men will also each have a keypad. It's numbered one to nine. The numbers represent degrees of arousal, so pressing number one represents disinterested, whilst pressing number nine indicates they're feeling extremely aroused. While the men are watching a series of different film clips, they'll be asked to press the button that most corresponds to how they're feeling, so we can tell who likes what. Oh, and if they think they might be able to fool us, behind this two-way window is social anthropologist Jean Smith. She'll be looking for the signs of arousal, enjoyment or even distress that you and I might not notice. I think one problem that people have with body language is they see one thing, like for example crossed arms, and then they make one, one big assumption. But actually you need a few different signals before you can sort of have an accurate interpretation of what's happening. Because although we Brits like to think we're liberated, open-minded and honest with each other, porn, it seems, is still a dirty word. I don't think uh, you should continue filming now. I think you should just stop the camera and you know, let's go inside and yeah, we we'll continue inside, yeah. Terry Stevens is a porn movie director. Today he's booked into a hotel to film a scene for a DVD he's producing. In our poll, 38% of British men told us they prefer this kind of amateur porn. Darren and Lisa are today's actors. I do still to um, kind of break the ice. I mean, even though we're familiar, it's always a nice way to sort of warm up on doing stills to start off with, because that way, when they get into the video, the whole bonding process is kind of complete. And have a look, Lee. Cool guy. Before Terry reveals the secrets of a porn producer, it's back to the experiment. The four men representing our four age groups have each taken their place in the arena, along with 16 others who vary in age, class, occupation, income, and of course, degree of porn habit. Charles is upper class, so our poll says he should sweat over the S and M. Velton is working class. Our poll tells us he'll be into hardcore. Jerome loves porn. Our poll suggests he'll like it all. So let's find out. The first film of the experiment is mild, soft pornography, the kind you'd find late at night on cable TV and made to get you in the mood. Professor McNair will be watching the films along with the men. It's usually shown post-watershed, late-night TV. It's usually advertised as, you know, vaguely erotic TV. I would say it's very mainstream now. Uh, most people will have seen this stuff on normal television. Each film will last five minutes, and the purpose of this first soft porn sequence is to relax the men and give them a taste of what's to come. So, halfway through, we ask the men for some feedback to test their keypads. And then, when we reach the end of the film, we ask the men to press their keypads again, and we take their pulse. In between each porn film, we'll play the men some calming images and music, so that they can collect their thoughts, and we can collect their data. So, after round one of soft porn, Jerome had already reached the heady heights of feeling fairly aroused. That's a five on his keypad. He was sitting with his arms crossed, folded across his chest, and his legs crossed. So already it's kind of showing like, you know, leave me alone, I kind of want to be by myself. The pulse of an average 60-year-old man should be around 70, but 61-year-old Seamus's heart pumped its way up to 108 beats per minute. Maybe it's just nerves, eh? If most of the men didn't find the soft porn arousing, can women understand why? We showed the film to four open-minded mates from Essex. They can't um, be getting a lot. Yeah, in my opinion, I'd say the same. They, if they've got to get enjoyment from that, they're not getting much at all. And later we'll be asking Kelly and her friends to watch much more porn. Because we're still to play films showing oral sex, lesbian sex, bondage and sadomasochism. And really hardcore sex. <laughs> These 20 men of different ages, jobs and social class have been selected to take part in an experiment where they'll be bombarded with scenes from pornographic movies. Because according to our poll of 1,000 British men, 40% said porn is more acceptable today than before. Excuse the pun, so much of it shoved down your throat that, um, you know, you, you just become come used to it. For many blokes, porn is the first sex education that they get. That's where they first see it actually happening in front of their eyes. Because it's so accessible, 
that your kind of uh, boundaries are poof, lowered. It's everywhere. The 20 men have each been wired up to a heart rate monitor and have keypads to give us a measure of their state of arousal. We hope they'll be honest, because if they're not, then social anthropologist Gene Smith will be watching from behind this two-way screen. They're either imagining themselves actually in the act, or if they're not enjoying porn, it's because they're just looking at naked men. Four of the men, Charlie, Sam, Jem, and Ken, have been chosen as representatives of each age group. And after we've discovered <laughs> what kind of porn they really like, we'll show their partners. Yeah, no, he looked pretty bored. He did smile on the girl on girl one. Something happened there. He actually acted it's <laughs> And we've also asked you. We ran a poll of a thousand British men under the age of 65, and we got some surprising results. If you read in scripture, uh, back in the Old Testament, I believe God clearly states that men should watch as much porn as humanly possible. And we've also shown the films to a group of girlfriends from Essex to find out what women think. Well, we carry on like that. you tape you've got to fall out. Our 20 men have already seen a softcore film, and now it's time for some harder material. Helping us understand why men watch porn is Professor Brian McNair. From the very early days of pornography, oral sex has been one of the staples of the genre. Uh, you, you see it in early black and white movies, silent stag reels, photographs, etc. In our poll of the viewing habits of a thousand British men, 11% of those from East Anglia said that polishing their technique was the reason they watched. Why is this? Is there not enough women up there? What is it with East Anglians? I mean, you shouldn't look to porn for technique advice. Remember, pornography is, is done by professionals. It should really have a warning sticker on it. Don't try this at home. As the oral sex film begins, non-user Sam's pulse is steady at 69 beats per minute. So he clearly isn't finding this scene arousing. But halfway through the film, he hits a five on his keypad. He's admitting he's fairly aroused. Jem only registers a three. That's vaguely aroused. But Jean has other ideas. I noticed that he was tilting his head a few times. And I think what was happening is he was actually trying to move to the angle that the film was going. Um, so he's trying to interpret it in a different way. Next to Jem, former heavy porn user Dave has also hit the vaguely aroused button. But he's been biting his lip during the scene. He's probably really conscious of his own oral capabilities. What we learned about men when they watch porn is they're either imagining themselves actually in the act or if they're not enjoying porn it's because they're just looking at naked men so he's probably one of those who's empathizing with the main character we let another couple of minutes pass then ask the men to vote again before taking their pulse occasional porn lover Rod is 47 and physically fit so his heart rate should be in the mid 60s and by the end of this oral film, it's 55 beats per minute. He's seen it all before. So will anything arouse him? We'll find out later. The 18 to 25ers responded more strongly than the other age groups to the oral sex. We're more into these, the blowjobs and oral sex, I think, basically, all those different stuff, compared with the old school methods, yeah. It's like having a good time. At, you don't have to do a lot of the work, basically. The girl does it. Non-user Sam responded strongly to the oral sex scenes. Is he trying to tell his girlfriend something? I think because uh, I like I like stuff that I can be involved in. <laughs> Obviously, oral sex uh, I very much enjoy. So what does Vega think? It's not something that men, I assume, tend to get every day. It's a bit of a cheat, so I think that's, that's something that I know interests him. So do all men think this way? To understand more, we need to ask what porn does to them. Aside from what's going on downstairs, we really need to know what's happening upstairs. The actual action of being very close to something that you're watching works directly with the seeking pathway within the brain. And it's that seeking pathway where dopamine is produced. And when we produce dopamine, we experience feelings of pleasure and satisfaction. And dopamine also motivates us to try and seek more of it. So the more dopamine you produce, the more you seek out and the more that you want. So you actually get hooked in chemically with internet pornography and find yourself actually wanting and needing more and more to get the same buzz. Dopamine is released in real life when someone is sexually attracted to or falls in love with someone else. So watching too much porn could make you fall in love with it. 
once a sex education tool, porn has evolved to possess just one simple function, to cause sexual excitement to men. But things are changing. There's been a cultural shift. Women have become, and particularly, you know, since the rise of feminism in the 70s and into the 80s, and, and, and the Madonna phenomenon and after Madonna, and it's become now much more um, acceptable for women to admit that they too want access to pornography to sexual culture and that this is not something shameful and this is not something that, that, that good girls don't do anymore. I think women are as interested in porn as men, it just not, it, they just don't like to show it as much. For me, it's a very instantaneous thing, you know, you see nudity, get hard, away you go. For a woman it needs more of a build up. So to test that theory, we took the porn films we're showing to the men to Essex to ask four broad-minded women in their 20s what they liked. <laughs> caught up with them on Kelly's hen night, getting ready to have their own encounter with the naked form. Hangovers have worn off just in time to watch the oral sex film that we've been showing to the men. The clip includes fellatio. She's gonna gag. I think you'd say that. Oh, you're not that. Oh, you'd take them for that. You'll come out of bum. <laughs> to keep things even, there's also cunnilingus. Oh, that's a <laughs> So what's the appeal to men? Because it's more full on, isn't it? You've got more detail. Yeah. And you can see everything. You can yeah. see everything. They're showing everything. And probably teaching them how to do it. And oh. they'll get to see much more later. Back at our experiment, and the men have recovered from their own taste of oral. The next film we'll show them is Girl on Girl. I think many heterosexual men enjoy the idea of two women performing for them, you know, in front of them. It kind of satisfies the male ego in a certain way. In our poll of a thousand British men, the biggest fans of girl-on-girl -girl porn went to boarding school. Two-thirds said they prefer it to any other porn. I was at a boarding school. I'm in that 65%. Done. The boarding school guys like the girl-on-girl -girl more. Probably because they haven't been exposed to girls. They're like locked in a castle for, for six years. There's no women. They never had any vaginas at all. So I suppose when they turn on a porn DVD, they want to see as many vaginas as they can. They don't just want girl on girl, they want girl on girl on girl on girl. A fifth of men under 25 told us they prefer girl on girl. So it's no surprise that 24 year old Jerome tells us he's quite aroused. Ken, though, doesn't find any of this interesting and presses one on his keypad. As we near the end of the film, porn lover Jerome is fit to burst, as he's first to tell us he's extremely aroused. Most of the men's heart rates actually went down during this scene, with the exception of middle-class, ultra-cool former user Rod, who got all excited and raised his pulse from 55 to 56. Andrew dislikes porn, but found something he could relate to. I prefer girl on girl rather than watching some guy doing stuff to women. I'd rather watch two women because I, I think there's something slightly, people may disagree with me, I think there's something slightly homoerotic about watching a guy. Girl on girl got positive reactions amongst almost all our men, including occasional porn user Marlon. I just found it very sexy in some kind of way just to see two women doing stuff with each other because in a way if you watch that they know exactly what they like and what, go, what a woman likes so in a way you, you're kind of learning to a certain degree so yeah I don't know I just find it really sexy and nice to see them. Well he's obviously a regular watcher of porn. 
Looks completely relaxed. It's like he's watching a pleasant instructional video. What about Charlie, a fully signed up member of the Girl on Girl Porn Appreciation Society? So why did he only tell us he was vaguely aroused? Can his wife and Nada shed any light on the subject? It doesn't surprise me that he's a bit desensitized to it, to be honest. Now on the internet you just click and, and you can see anything and everything and, and obviously if you've seen it once, you see it the second time, the third time, then the grades of feeling for it is just gonna fail. And what do Kelly and her friends think about girl on girl porn? Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> do you really need to say that? <laughs> <laughs> See, the whole girl on girl thing, I See, think, is the biggest fantasy for both because yeah. you don't get two beautiful women like that mm -hmm. snogging. Yeah, but I found that more disgusting, me personally. Like, do I really want to I see that? I didn't think it was disgusting. I just thought, well, they are gonna, see, mm. I don't think that's a turn off for me, but it just doesn't do anything. Do anything. It's not a no. turn off, but no, it's not a turn, not turn on, on either. I could sit there and watch it and not have any reaction to it. No. Coming up, we show our men the delights of dungeon porn. And how porn producers keep men hooked. Porn has to be more than just what it used to be. Yes, that's been water shot, so I can see exactly what's going on. We've handpicked 20 men to take part in a unique social experiment, exposing them to pornographic films and measuring their reactions, both physical and emotional. Because in a poll of 1,000 British men, one in six under 35 said they watched porn every single day. Literally, I can have a phone call about someone dying of cancer, right? And I get an image in my head and go, right, I'll have a tug. And there's no association between someone dying and having a tug. It's just literally, I want to come. It's like trying to avoid porn. It must be hard. I can't imagine being a priest not wanting to see porn because it pops up everywhere. Of the original 20 men in our experiment, four have volunteered for closer scrutiny. Sam, Charlie, Jem, and Ken. Social anthropologist Gene Smith has already made some interesting observations from behind this two-way screen. This is interesting. It seems like most of the men have their hands clasped and their legs open for this one. We've already shown them soft porn, oral porn, and lesbian porn. So far, they've shown different levels of arousal. Middle-class former user Rod has amazed us all with his composure and his constant heart rate. 25-year-old David loves oral sex, while working-class Richard preferred girl-on-girl. -girl. It's all a bit of a turn-off for porn hater Andrew so far. And bachelor boy Jerome, well, Jerome just likes anything. But now we're into uncharted territory. Gone is the baby oil, the lace and the lipstick. Now it's time for whips, chains and candle wax. Human sexuality is a very strange and, and diverse thing and uh, there's a pornography really for every taste and desire out there. Um, you know, these more fetishistic uh, tastes like S&M, they go back of course to the Marquis de Sade, but it's never been more accessible, never been more easily available to, to ordinary people. Whereas previously in the past, you would have to have really you know, sought it out in, 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 in dark basement shops in Soho or somewhere. In a poll of 1,000 British men, of those of you that tick the box mark upper class, 25% said they preferred sadomasochism and bondage in their porn. If we can make it 50 to 100% of those types of people, just especially the bankers, tie them up. Tie them, I'll, I'll, I'll whip them. Get me in there. I'll give, them a, I'll give them a little something. It's no surprise that upper class men prefer bondage. I mean, they've been whipped by sir for half their lives, so I suppose it's just what they're used to. They need these kicks to keep themselves going, to keep their sex drive up. Um, I don't personally understand it, but, you know, whatever makes you sleep at night. I suppose it's not just their upper lips that are stiff. Do I let you have my heels or fucking not? Yeah. This is a good mouth to pick on you with. Oh, I'm not pumped. Halfway into the bondage scene, and some of the reactions tell their own story. Fifteen of the men hit a one on their keypad. That's a resoundingly disinterested. But non-porn user John leads the pack, telling us he's mildly aroused. And there's not much difference by the end of the film. Twelve of the men told us they were still thoroughly disinterested. But occasional porn users Jim, David and Marlon all told us they'd become vaguely aroused. The middle class John is still a fan. I thought visually it was actually more exciting than the other scenes that we'd, we'd actually seen. It wasn't that I actually wanted to be in that position. <laughs> um, I like the girl. Um, but, um, and I thought the set, as it were, looked, 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 looked a bit more interesting, really. While John is completely open about his affection for the dungeon scenes, porn virgin Nathan and porn hater Andrew were concerned that they might be into S&M without knowing it. 
they both happened to be checking their heart rate monitors a lot. And this to me just shows that they probably were less aware of how their body re reacts physiologically to viewing porn. And they're also quite self-conscious about it because <laughs> I don't think they wanted their heart rates to be very high. And uh, they were just checking to make sure it wasn't. Guilty conscience, Nathan. The thought of being in that position puts me off a lot. But the star of this particular show is Rod, whose pulse steady for most of the experiment in the mid-50s increased during the bondage to a whopping 89. Did it? <laughs> I just like, I think being domineered seems quite appealing. It was, yeah, especially when she was uh, at the rubber gloves on and I thought, yeah, that's all right. I didn't think it was, but obviously I did. So, I uh, oh, don't go into watching S&M or anything like that, but, yeah, I suppose being chained up seems all right. For some men who watch pornography, they may be in a relationship where their particular tastes aren't catered for, or maybe actually they have particular tastes that they're, they're not comfortable exploring, perhaps sort of S&M or going into sort of particular types of techniques. So watching that on the screen gives them an opportunity to, to indulge those fantasies, to perhaps pretend that they are taking part without actually doing so. We've been showing each of the films to four girlfriends from Essex, not regular users of porn themselves, of course. I can understand why women would watch it. Yeah, yeah because, because it's a man that. in pain. Because, yeah, it's a man in pain, but it would be more up for us, like you say, we'd watch it more for having a laugh, wouldn't you? Yeah. Look at that. But I can't understand why a man would watch it. Perhaps maybe men would want to do it, but not have the guts to actually do it. That's why they watch it. Yeah. But I can understand why girls would want, would want to watch these. Yeah. My favourite type of porn is probably bondage, something like that, S&M kind of thing. I like quite the fantasy of it. Um, I like, you know, the idea that you can watch something that you wouldn't necessarily do in real life. So girls do like porn after all, and more and more are watching porn with men. But this should carry a health warning. They worry about being compared. They worry about expectations that they will, you know, what's happening in the porn film will be expected to continue in the bedroom. And some, some of those fears will, you know, are not unfounded. In our poll of a thousand British men, 21% said they watch porn with their partners. Fifth of men watch porn with their partners. Do you know what? The other four are definitely trying. I love it. I watch porn with my partner. Uh, by partner, I mean wife. Um, yeah, and uh, she loves it too. And we learn stuff about it, you know? I mean, what a great way to break an issue open, like uh, anal sex, by going, hey, that's curious. Hey, I wonder if we could try that. And is it then a natural progression for men to want to appear in a porn film with their partner? In our poll, over 30% said they did. Darren and Lisa have turned that fantasy into reality. It just happened, didn't it? Just got into it. Used to watch it, as you do at home on the internet. Brought around all the time. I was on there looking on the site. And there was an advert on there about the sex trade. And the money was fantastic, so I said yes because of that, right? <laughs> but, and it's been quite fun. Yeah. At the end of the day, you do it in your own home, don't you? So everyone's had sex, will have sex in their life. So it's a natural thing. So is porn becoming respectable? In our poll, 40% said it was. Not only is it more accessible um, to people, but it's also more respectable. You know, you can, you can talk about it now at dinner parties. This is part of the, I think, of the, the cultural shift, which, uh, which I call pornification of mainstream culture. The USA is the world's most prolific producer of pornography, with Britain coming in eighth. But while Hollywood churns out glossy, expensive titles, we Brits seem to prefer the homemade stuff. In our poll of a thousand British men between the ages of 18 and 65, 48% of the upper classes said they prefer cheap or homemade porn. There you go. I want your bum this way. Yeah. Porn has to be more than just what it used to be. I think gone are the days when you could just see a guy and a girl just get naked straight away in the middle of a bed and just have sex. I think part of the enjoyment of watching them having sex is watching the preamble that builds up to that. And thanks to the internet, pornography is becoming much more personalised. Nowadays, uh, the, the availability of the internet and the ability to produce material for small niche markets um, who are prepared sometimes to pay for it or not, uh, means that you've got this kind of explosion of porn of different kinds, very, very fetishistic, very focused on small groups of users. 
So far, our 20 volunteers have been exposed to a diet of soft, oral, lesbian and fetish porn. Now, although there's some extreme forms of porn out there, the next and final film we'll show them is what everyone would consider straight, hardcore, boy-on-girl sex, albeit with an alternative ending. So which one of our men will find it most arousing? It's a bit taboo, really, isn't it? It's a bit sort of not talked about, just, you know, it's good gear. The Why Men Watch Porn experiment is well underway. We've selected 20 men in four age groups, wired them to heart rate monitors, given them feedback buttons to press, and they're being studied by a behaviorist in case they're covering up. All this so we can measure their true reactions to porn and then reveal them to their partners. From the 20 men, four have been singled out for special attention. Ken, Sam, Charlie and Jen. After showing them the soft porn, 20-year-old heavy porn user Jerome was already aroused. After the oral porn, it was the younger group that were most aroused, saying they were watching for tips. The men then watched some girl-on-girl -girl action, and frequent user Charlie, who says he loves lesbianism, but only admit to being mildly aroused. It was clear he was enjoying it. Then we played the boys a bondage scene, after which Rod gave away his true feelings that he might enjoy being dominated after all. Oh, don't go into watching S&M or anything like that, but, yeah, I suppose being chained up seems all right. The equipment's been reset, the men have had a break, and now the final film we show the men is boy-girl hardcore, but with a twist. Professor Brian McNair has been monitoring the experiment and the men. Anal sex has always been around, obviously, in human sexuality, and there have always been images of, of anal sex, you know, going right back to ancient Greece and Rome. Um, modern pornography has just made it more accessible. Uh, modern technology has made it more accessible. I wouldn't say it was a new kind of image uh, in itself. <laughs> Halfway through, and once again, Jerome wished he could have given the film a 10 out of 10, but his keypad runs out on 9. He's kept his arousal well hidden since the beginning. Moderate user Paul hasn't pressed his keypad at all. Can Gene work out the reason why? He's blinking hard. He's also nodding his head as if he agrees with what's going on. I think he is enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, I was doing great to really press a button, because it was, um, yeah, interesting. <laughs> but it's a very tame in some parts, because I don't know about the other guys, but it was seeing it done there. Porn lover Velton from Leeds also punched a six on his keypad. It's a bit taboo, really, isn't it? It's a bit sort of not talked about, just, you know, it's good gear. And even Richard has reached his peak. Well. Not necessarily the anal, but it was, it was full on sex, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was, it was full, pretty full. I did like everything, actually. Yeah, it's just more involving. It's, it's just real sex, isn't it? So. so, what if our Essex girls came home from work to find their husbands watching this kind of porn? No, but then if he likes it and he gets turned on by it, then, all right, okay, if it's every single time, then yeah, you'd think that there's a problem. problem. Yeah. But then, every whatever, now in a blue moon, just stick, stick it on, then. If he's feeling it, he's feeling it. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't look very um, like she's really enjoying that, does it? See, I can. My bum's squeaking now. <laughs> Just the thought of it. Just... From our four age group representatives, it was Jem that found this porn most appealing. He described himself as feeling fairly aroused, so we thought it high time to show his partner Shirley the results. In his personal nature he's a dominating person with his job and everything else sometimes it can be a pain in the ass literally he is so i rule the world no that was fine i mean i could see that all day but now it, i think it's every day it's every place you know a bit of porn somewhere in the over 50s category ken has been patently disinterested in everything we showed him it's not my sort of thing um nice sofas nice scenery good setting but wife Hazel knew he'd get something positive from the exercise. She said, if some of the contestants are pretty, you know, the guys in the studio, she said, then that might get you excited, like number five, you know. That's a good-looking guy. Now, I'd like to have seen him up on the screen, then I might have had, you know, things moving around, but... Um... Um, over to Hazel. Ken likes pretty people. Um, he'll say the same, if he's looking at television, he'll say, she's lovely. 
Now, I might disagree. I think, oh, no. Or he'll see a boy and he'll say, isn't he beautiful? So what have our men learned from this eye-watering experience? In the youngest group, non-user Sam hasn't changed his opinion about porn. I've never really been much of a porn watcher as such. I've seen porn, but I'm not really a, a lover of porn. I'm, I'm more of the... I prefer the real thing. <laughs> In the 25 to 35 year old group, old hand Charlie has come out of the experiment with fresh thinking. I've kind of realised that porn is like a bit dull now, and so I think that to get my kicks, um, I'm going to have to try other things. Jem from the 35 to 50 year olds hasn't been surprised at all by the experience. Basically, when I was looking at it, it was like it was something I've seen last week, or, you know, it was something general. It wasn't something which was new or surprisingly dangerous or whatever, you know? And unless you're like dungeon-loving John, the over-50s seem to find all this moaning and groaning a bit distasteful. Non-user Ken probably won't be coming back. I just find it just a bit false. I mean, I wouldn't go into a hotel and put coins in a slot and pay to watch that. Perhaps Cheryl Cole could help Ken. In our poll, most British men told us they'd rather see her in a porn film than Victoria Beckham or even Dame Helen Mirren. I think something that kind of was something that was interesting to me was just hearing about how men interpreted porn and it seemed like the ones who were the most creative and empathetic enjoyed porn the most because they could first imagine themselves as the main character and then they could create in their mind different sort of scenarios and so I never really attributed those two characteristics of being empathetic and creative to being able to have a more pleasurable experience watching porn and since Kelly's getting married soon, how does she feel now about why men watch porn? It's tension release. Tension, yeah, I was going to say. Tension. Have a wank, have a wank yeah. I think it's because I enjoy it. Yeah, well, yeah, see it, isn't it? But so fantasy it's fantasy land. Us, we can just get lost in a bath or reading a book or whatever. But relaxing, chilling out. I like that. See, they like, need when, something stimulant. When girls get the horn, I'm just going to be just blatant here. When girls get the <laughs> horn, yeah, we're like, you wait till I get you home. Sort of <laughs> Where blokes are like, she ain't gonna be home for another hour. I can't wait. <laughs> there is still so much we don't understand about human sexuality. It's something that, that we are still learning about on a day by day basis, and particularly learning about this, the neuropsychology, so the links between what we experience as emotion and actually what's going on within us physiologically, and that those links is something we're, we're really learning about now. So now we know why men watch porn. Young guys want to immerse themselves and polish up on their technique. If you're between 25 and 50, you're more likely to want escapism and fantasy. Now it used to be like, oh, you're feeling horny, let's watch a bit of porn. But I've reached a point now I'm thinking, let's watch a bit of porn because I want to feel horny. And the over 50s are just desperate for a good story. Porn is something that's failed to be erotic, in my case, and in this case. But could watching porn actually be good for you? Anything that doesn't involve me getting injured, I quite like to watch. In our poll of a thousand British men, over a third of under 35 said that they'd be more likely to commit a sexual crime if they didn't watch porn. I can't imagine, you know, like, a sexual... I mean, I can't remember Joseph Fretzel going, if I only had some porn, do you know what I mean? That's terrifying. Wow. I mean, so in a way, we should subsidise porn. We should get porn out there to stop sex crime. There are two theories about pornography. One is that pornography uh, promotes sexual violence and makes it more likely, or sex crimes, makes it more likely amongst men. And the other is that, by, that, that pornography provides an outlet, a catharsis, for impulses um, and desires that would otherwise be enacted in real life and that therefore pornography, the consumption of pornography, can actually act as a kind of pressure valve. And what man hasn't once thought that they'd make a great porn star? It's a dream job, right, Darren? I think it's actually quite a good turn on, knowing that somebody's going to get enjoyment from us. It's quite thrilling. It's fun. Yeah. That's all, folks. Ooh.